I, I think that probably a lot of people remember where they were and what they were doing on 9-11, and certainly I'm no uh, exception to that. Uh, I'm a reserve officer, so on 9-11, I was working on my civilian job as an airline pilot, and I was a 757 first officer that day, and we were just starting our last day of a four-day trip. We had flown into New York City the night before from Mexico City, and uh, we were on 9-11. We were scheduled to fly from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Nassau, Bahamas, and then turn to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, about 9 o'clock as we taxied around the north side of the terminal in LaGuardia, you could see Manhattan, and I saw smoke coming off the North Tower, which you know, was unusual. I'd never seen that before, obviously. Uh, we had New York-based uh, flight attendants, so I asked the, the lead flight attendant to come up and take a look, and she saw it, and she said, well, she asked if she could borrow my cell phone to call her husband and find out what was going on. So I, I gave her my cell phone, and as we continued to taxi, when we were handed off to tower frequency, I asked the controller uh, if the World Trade Center was on fire, and his response was simply, Yep. So, and that was all I could get. Uh, uh, but we continued to taxi to the end of the runway, and as we got to the uh, approach end of runway four, which was the departing runway that day, uh, there's a slight dogleg in the taxiway, which allowed us to look straight down Manhattan. There was one aircraft on the runway holding in position for departure, and there was another aircraft on the parallel, or the, per the perpendicular portion of the taxiway, number one for takeoff. And as we sat there, I was just looking downtown. I could see helicopters flying around uh, the building with the smoke off and you know, just trying to imagine what could have happened when I saw the second plane come from behind the tower and veered right into the south tower. And I just, you know, uh, a, a whoa came out and the, the captain looked up and uh, something similar came out of his mouth and, and uh, you know, just this big huge fireball came out of the north side of the tower. Uh, something you'd only see in a movie, at least from my perspective. And uh, uh, the captain just said then, what was that? And I said, well, sir, that was an aircraft. And he said, was it a, was it a big aircraft? And I said, yes, sir, that was a jet, like this one. And uh, of course, that turned out to be a 757, just like ours, uh, when we found out later. Uh, so I, you know, obviously we didn't know what was going on. I said, sir, I think we need to go back to the gate. And, and he said, okay. So I called the dispatcher. Uh, and I uh, told him that we wanted to go back to the gate, and he said, guys, I don't know what's going on, but all departures out of New York's airspace have been terminated indefinitely. Well, as we got onto the runway, taxiing back, my dispatcher sent us an ACARS message, which is a small interface unit that we have in the cockpit to uh, interact with the outside agencies. And I, I printed it out and ripped it off and read it aloud to the captain. It said, gentlemen, two large aircraft have just struck the World Trade Center towers taxiing back to the gate would probably not be a bad idea. And uh, to this day, I wish I'd ripped that off and had everybody sign it, uh, but I didn't. Um, but we taxi back to the runway, and, and I was starting to think in my mind that that image was replaying over and over, seeing that aircraft strike, and it, it just, you know, it looked deliberate because of the way the, the aircraft banked into the tower, although uh, skillfully inept because it, apparently he ha hadn't had the skill to adjust for the winds and strike his target. He had to do a last a last minute maneuver and the smoke coming off the, the other tower. I had no idea what was going on, but I turned around to the flight attendant and I said, I just asked her, is everybody sitting down? And I said, shut the door. She tossed me my cell phone and shut the door and the captain furled his brow and he looked at me and he said, you don't think, and I interrupted him and I said, sir, I don't know, but I think we need to get the aircraft to the gate and get these people off the plane. So we, and I think I only had to remind him once then not to hit the aircraft in front of us because we were in a hurry at that point then. So we got off, we got back to the gate, and uh, they shuffled us downstairs. And I remember looking at my cell phone, and I had already missed four calls, uh, which I later, as I got to open it up and, and listen to it, my wife had seen what was going on on TV and just said, honey, please tell me you're stuck on the beach in the Bahamas. <laughs> and of course I wasn't. I was in New York City. But uh, the uh, it was hard to get a, a call out from there because all of the cell lines were you know, saturated in the phone lines, and they shuffled us downstairs. Again, nobody knew what was going on. They told us that they wanted us to stay downstairs in the terminal building because they thought that we might be targets as crew members. So we stayed down there and watched the towers collapse on TV, and uh, just, you know, a as a group, a bunch of flight, you know, crew members, pilots and flight attendants and whatnot, and the chief pilots, and, and we set up, a uh, set up a staging area, 
and just remained there for, uh, for a few hours before they finally got us off of the airport property. And we came back upstairs and went outside and it was just totally surreal. In New York City, there were no aircraft taking off or landing. There were F-15s flying over downtown New York City, which was like out of a movie again, like Red Dawn or something, uh, which was uh, just, just different. They uh, got us hotel rooms in Queens and uh, we stayed there for the next four days. Um, and I had a, a hotel room that, that, again, you could see Manhattan, which, you know, the skyline looked totally different now without the towers. Uh, I saw President Bush come in on Marine One with fighter escorts. And uh, eventually they let us go downtown and, and view the wreckage. Um, but it was just, it was odd. And one of the things that I really remember, um, now my wife, when she had seen this on TV, immediately went to, I, I always printed out a copy of my uh, trip so that she knew where I was going and the flight numbers and all of that. So she immediately went to the computer and typed out, you know, track this flight. And it just gave a, a response that said, we're sorry, we're unable to track that flight. So she just, you know, she was a real trooper, but I think that was very frustrating and difficult for her until I could finally get a hold of her. And, uh, but we stayed there for the next four days, like I said. And, and I, I think one of the things that I remember uh, succinctly about being there and about seeing that and doing that was, uh, was my morning jog. Uh, the next day on September 12th, I went for a jog in Queens. And you know how it is when you go to some large cities and, and you're around some people and you don't, you don't really interact with them that, that much, you know, because you don't know them. And, and uh, even in New York City, sometimes you don't really make eye contact with people. It's just, you know, it's just the way sometimes people are there. But on September 12th, on my jog in Queens, it was like I was back in my hometown. I, there were so many people that just came out and waved and said hello and how are you doing and, and uh, we're gonna get those guys and it was just really neat. It was totally different. It was, it was Norman Rockwellish, but it was just very, very neat, which made me you know, think and still do when I think about 9-11, uh, when I hear things on the news about people protesting this and that and why do we do things and why do we do that? And, and of course, we all need to step back and realize our purpose and why, it, why we do the things we do. And of course, uh, my response is, because this is America and we're Americans. So that is really my recollection of 9-11 and where I was and what I saw.